Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey! That was a simultaneous start. Look at you! Look like a math teacher over there. Holy hell! Thank you. I feel like I look okay, actually. Well, the shirt's nice, and it's a it's a solid stash. This is the new Ted Baker I was uh, talking about in a previous episode. Short sleeve Ted Baker went out and bought it, and I, I, it's like a Marty McFly shirt. Yes. And then uh, Sarah's shooting a video, and she's doing a uh, like a, a spoof of Pretty in Pink, and so I had to play an '80s dad. So I went mustache, no glasses. Oh what yeah! Wow, I can see it. Nice '80s dad look, and yes. uh, I decided to keep it for the for the fans. I mean, I don't want to deprive the fans of this. No, it looks cool. You look like a, a nom vet, you know, and then you're you're trying to discipline some kids. It's so crusty, though. I'm jealous of the people. I just did a, a conference call with like a production team for something that's not going to get made, and this guy, it looked like a, a grease paint like Groucho stash, yeah. pitch black. Full, like mine's got little holes. Is this yeah. thing? This, yeah, it's like a little, uh, an old push broom that's losing some bristles. Yeah, it looks, it's it's terrible. It looks like you know, uh, my my daughter got murdered and raped, and then they had to pull out my hairs to test to see if it was me, but it wasn't. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you smell, you know, a scrambled egg in there and a chicken parm? Like, does it all save? No, I don't smell anything. I, I I got COVID or something because I I don't smell anything. It's just a regular mustache smell. I mean, I've only had it the stat. I mean, I had the beard because I don't I don't shave for a while. Yeah. And, and pe- by the way, people message me to like keep the beard, and I'm like, well, this is what I look like all the time. Like I, I, I never know. shave all the way. I always have a five o'clock shadow because I'm I'm gay and my father hates me. Yeah. Well, you always hear with the uh, with the mustache uh, or or the flavor saver which is a horrifically gross thing for the soul patch. But I don't know. I don't want flavor save. I don't want to, you know, taste a kid's asshole all day. You know, I want to I want to move on. The patch, I'll just say this, and I don't want to uh, offend any fans. I'm always afraid to lose fans, but the patch is embarrassing. Patch yeah. Adams sucks. Uh, you know, uh, nicotine cabbage patch, patch kids. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's terrible. Players. It's a yeah. terrible look, and I just, I hate it. It's just ridiculous. You got a little dot there? Come on. It doesn't matter. Maybe it's the OCD talking, but I'm like, I need two things or if something's not right. I don't like it. It just sits there under the lip. And what's the point? At least the mustache. All right, I get it. You're a homosexual or a cop or a fireman. But the soul pet, what does that mean? You're in Sugar Ray? It, it doesn't help me at all. By the way, is it soul, S-O-U-L? Or is it soul, like a singular patch? Oh, it's definitely not the fish. Maybe it's uh, I think it's the soul like black S-O-L-E? people have soul yeah. like like soul like, food like Hoo-hoo! soul yeah. man. Ba-na-ba-ba-na-ba-na. Okay, I thought maybe it was soul like we have a pat like some people have multiple patches, but this is a soul patch. It's just that's alone. a great question. That uh, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, give somebody give that a goog. I think you're on to something. Because there's like soul, because it does sound like soul brother. What's up, soul brother? Right. Oh, it is soul, Shelby's saying. So yeah, it's I soul. Think it's definitely soul. Okay, like Aretha Franklin. Did she have the patch? I mean, what, what, what's the origin of this? No, no, no. I, I don't know. I think because it show maybe like some blues musicians had it, you know, back in the day or some rock and roll guys. So it's got soul. I guess so. The black people had that for a while. They'd have a little dot underneath. Yeah, I think. like Jordan had a little piece yeah. for a minute. He also had a Hitler for for a hot second. Remember that yeah. on the Haynes commercial? Like he was like <laughs> corporate Hitler. Yeah, that was like, oh, this guy is the greatest of all time because he's, you know, it's like Woody Allen and Michael Jackson can bang a child and everybody's fine with it because they're so great. And I guess Jordan's so great he can have a soul patch or a Hitler patch. I mean, interesting. Did you watch the Tiger Doc on HBO yet? I by the way? did. I loved it. I loved it too, but I'm getting shit. I'm getting all kinds of flack. What's the beef? It's great. It's Alex Gibney back again. P- 
People, uh, people hate it because it, it's a bunch of people were like, it's a hit piece, which I thought was strange. People were like, it's fucking um, tabloid hit piece, yada, yada. Was it Gibney, by the way? I thought two brothers made it. Well, he, he produced. Ah, produced. Well, I, they said uh, people were like, it's a hit piece. It's tabloid bullshit. And to me, I'm like, A, I love Tiger before. I love him even more now. Yeah. I came out with even more love for him, and it made me deeply empathetic towards the guy because yes. his father beat him, and his father was a veteran and fucked women in front of him and, and all this crazy shit, and he was famous by the time he was a fetus. So I felt like he had no chance in life. So the fact that he's fucking a few dames, who gives a shit? And also, all those things were public. This person just took yes. it and put it all in one place and then made him said this is why he's like this. It's what gave you a reason of why he was already all these things. But I was getting shit like I'm supporting fucking, uh, you know, the cancel culture or some shit. No, no. I mean, he was... They're just reporting it. They're just chronicling what happened. I, I feel the same way. I, and I thought they could have been a lot meaner. I thought they pulled some punches. I was into it. And I also thought it made the paparazzi look like shitbags. Yes. Exactly. The paparazzi is kind of the the original canceler because they're like, oh, we need to get we need to ruin this guy so we can sell some magazines. Yes, exactly. They are the canceler. And worst, worst Batman villain, the canceler. <laughs> um, that'd be a funny uh, movie or whatever. Batman gets uh, canceled. Yeah, they come out and they tweet out, you know, Batman, you know, raped Catwoman or whatever <laughs> he is. And <laughs> yeah. he said the N word or whatever. <laughs> Right. He said the N-word to Commissioner, Commissioner Gordon, and they have a recording of it or something. Yeah, that would be something. That might be fun. Let's um, shoot it. Call this, call Salicus. What's the costume, though? Yeah, you'd have to get a Batman a thing. Big C. Or, you could just be Keaton. Or not Keaton. Uh, what's the, Bruce Wayne, I guess. You could just be Bruce Wayne, and the costume's hanging in the back or whatever. Right, right. That's true. And he's online. He's like, ah, this is the only guy I can't beat. I can beat the Joker because he's just a, a lunatic with a clown makeup. This guy is on the internet. It'd be funny, too, if Bruce Wayne didn't get it. You'd have to bleep it, but he just keeps saying the N-word in the thing. He's like, they're all <laughs> upset because I said beep, and then I guess right. you can't say beep anymore. That would be fun. Right. You know how many black people I've saved? I should be allowed to say that. Beep, beep, beep. You know. Right. And then there's someone else would that like, neighborhood. There's a bunch of beep. You know. Yeah, that'd be fun. By the way, you never see Batman really saving people, do you? Yeah, I think so, especially in the the uh, the, the movies. Like uh, he saves that boat full of people, doesn't he? And he saves he saves ladies, you know, with the he beats up people. What's Kim Basinger? Well, I get he 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 saves that. That's my point, I guess. Is he saves the main character or the climax? But there's never just like kind of whatever. Like Batman, the TV show. I feel like it was always the Joker was doing something. Like there's never just. Uh, maybe I'm completely way off base on this. Actually, the comic but, book is a lot of saving. It's a lot of uh, like petty crime. But, but you I gotta have a big boss, you know. Yeah, I'd like to see like you know somebody keys a car and Batman comes down and scissor kicks him or uh, you know someone's robbing a purse. But maybe I'm wrong about Batman. I haven't seen that many Batmans in a while. I'd just like to see some non-stars getting saved. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that. I guess because it's uh, it's Hollywood, you gotta up it. You know, you gotta have the evil villain that's trying to kill the Jews or whatever. But like, I, I'm with you, and I also I try to write a bit about this. It's weird that the villains are never insulting. Like I'd be like, oh, Batman's a, a he, he's a pedophile, he's a rapist. You know, like make fun of him. You're 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 Lex Luthor. Say mean shit. I think the Joker said some shit, right? Didn't he say something? I can't remember. You know, they're like, you're, you can't outsmart me, you're an idiot, you're a nerd, but I would, you know, call him a couple slurs and make fun of his mom, your mom's a slut, I fucked your mom in the mouth, you know, like, let's really rile him up. Yeah, what's up with Robin, you fucking queer? There you go, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, Superman, Man of Steel, I heard he can't get it up, you know, have fun with it. <laughs> Why not, you're a villain. More like Woman of Steel. Yeah, Wonder yeah. Woman said uh, your dick was invisible, it's like her lasso. I don't know, or what is it? The plane, the plane is invisible. I can't remember, but uh, anyways, Wonder comic Woman books sucks. suck, and um, <laughs> <laughs> you're stupid if you read them. But anyways, ah, I I agree, they're silly. What's up with these guys reading graphic novels? That's a that's an epidemic. 
I think they think there's something. They're like, I'm reading or whatever. But <laughs> it's like, get real. Get a book, you fucking child. Get a book, you weirdo. I see a guy, I go to their houses, and it's on the, the toilet. And I go, oh, gee, I didn't know you were one of them. You got uh, Starman and, and, you know, Asteroid Dick on the on the toilet. And they're like, oh, it's, it's realistic. He's in New York City. It's pollution. It's crime. I'm like, ah, get out of here. It's pictures. <laughs> It's all pictures. <laughs> I'll say this though: if you, if I do see uh, like a whole rack, like if they have like the wall and it's every issue in order, that speaks to my tits a little bit. That I can be like, okay, you got a whole thing here. Interesting. Uh, yeah, somehow that's better than just like a scraggler. Like you got one, you know, the I the, see. the iron tits on the on the <laughs> table. I'm like, yeah. come on, get real, hide that thing, you fucking loser. This <laughs> <Exactly>. is embarrassing. <laughs> I'd rather a gay porn out. Give me something than that's this. I, uh, yeah, but you like a saga. That's what I was gonna say. It'd be like if you just had like cut porn mags on your toilet. You're like, let's keep that to yourself. That's between <laughs> you and uh, you know your uh, whatever father. But <laughs> when they have the whole collection, because that means they're like, I was into it. Now I'm really into it. It feels more adult to collect the whole set somehow. I guess. I don't know. Collect the whole set sounds like what a 12-year-old says. Like, Mom, I got to collect the whole set. You got to buy it. But what's even worse than the comic book, and this is when I, I have to def- defriend, is when I go over there and he's got the Asian stuff. I'm talking the anime, the, what is it called? Wichita? What's it? Henta. Hentel? Have I've you seen even, Hentel? I'm upset you've heard of it. Oh, my God. Well, I've seen it on the porn sites. It's like Asian porn where their cartoons blowing each other. I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Hentel's a soup. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I got no, Hentel I, that, insurance. Yeah, that stuff, the anime has never, it does, it's not visually uh, appealing to me. It's Agreed. all sharp corners. They have like spiky hair and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't see it. I think it stinks. Uh, maybe you know, if you're watching Ducktales, I'm like, okay, I guess maybe right. it's it's kind of a something. It's kind of attractive <laughs> sexually, yeah. but yeah, anime is is silly. And then I hear all these people be like, the real Batman is. Uh, I don't want to get too specific here because now I'm just talking about one guy that I love. Yeah, yeah. But um, there's people that love the cartoon Batman. I I, I don't understand oh. the cartoon Batman. Animated series is like people are like it's so well written. It's like a Scorsese thing. You're like, get out of here. <laughs> Charlie Kaufman wrote one of them. You're like, no, he didn't. Shut up. <laughs> Kaufman but, stinks. But look, part it's like religion. Part of me is like, I wish I liked it. You can just go down to the the comic book store and pick up a couple of rags, and you're happy for a month. You know, I wish I had that. So I'm jealous in a way. Yeah. No, I think I, I've tried to um, put myself there. It's like it's like hooking up with a guy like you try to kind of imagine it yes. happening and, do it and now yeah i i come fast but i still don't want to do it you know <laughs> yeah, right right <clears throat> totally with you I, like the cool guy is stan lee or or whatever other nerd invented these guys that's cool like this guy invented something and people enjoy it and he made zillions of dollars and there's an empire behind it and made kids happy and their dad hit him and all this but I don't like the thing. I, I'm more interested in Stan Lee. I thought you meant the thing, the character, but yeah, I, I hate him too. I, I hate I, him. I, I hate all rock. the... Batman's the most acceptable to me because he's, yeah. he's dark and he's just a guy. He's like a martial artist, I guess. He's rich, whatever. Yeah. But um, Which, by the way, those guys must all like jerk off to it. Like the Elon Musks and the Andrew Bezos, oh. whatever the fuck his name is. They must, wait, what's Bezos? Jeff, Jeff Bezos. They must be so like, they must think about Batman. I yes. would imagine like, like, oh man, maybe I could get the fucking Batwing or whatever. I think you're right. I mean, they're basically Bruce Wayne. They're millionaire mogul types, you know, trying to get laid and in a mansion. And then Elon, based, the Tesla's like a Batmobile. Like he's almost made these vehicles for himself. Good point. Yeah, I, uh, but <clears throat> I assume they all are just nerds, though, in real life. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like you ever watch those old videos? Sometimes I go on a YouTube rabbit hole. Do you go with rabbit hole or wormhole? Everybody picks their own. I say rabbit hole or asshole. Ah uh, yes, yes. I, I try to mix it up with worm and rabbit, so I went with rabbit on that one. But uh, yeah, dick hole works too. But these guys. They, they have old footage of Elon Musk. First of all, his hair's about, like hairline starts about here. He, obviously, they all got plugs. At least Bezos had the balls to stay bald. 
But they're fucking dweebs. They're like these little nerds in a button down. They're in a in a shitty cubicle with a bunch of like paper stacked up, and they're like kicking a copy machine. Like oh, I can't get a break. And uh, I'll tell you, if you crunch the numbers, da 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 da. And then cut to twenty years later, and they they own you know Pluto. Yeah, good good for them. I say uh, hats off to those guys. You know, destroying the economy or whatever it is, but. Um, <laughs> You know, I I don't understand how to invent something. I can't even wrap my head around the idea of, like, creating a thing. It seems so daunting. It's weird that somebody is like a kid, and they're like, I'm going to invent things. Yeah. I've yeah, just well, always been like, ah, everything was invented already. I'll just use whatever. <laughs> well, two things on that. One, uh, they say invention is the mother. No. Invention necessity. is the mother. Necessity. Necessity. Yes, so whenever you're sitting at home and you go, isn't it weird that there's no way to crack an egg with your dick or whatever, and you're like, I'm going to make that. You know, somebody had to come up with Velcro or, or uh, you know, an egg beater thing where you turn it. And it so if you just sit around and go, what do, I, what do I think is not happening that should be happening? What's necessary? That's all. There you go. You got an invention. But that part... I don't want to say easy, but that I can do. A, a uh -huh. fucking homework machine, a, a dick-sucking uh, well. book or whatever. But it's inventing it. Then right. you have to create it. you got to put in the, the codes and the wires and the business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a, a Lego set that can fuck you in the ass is my invention, but I don't know how to make that. Well, you hire a, an Asian kid, you get some blueprints and some graph paper and a compass, and you're halfway there. A T-square. It's like a bit. If you think of the premise... You can eventually get to the punchline, but it's going to take... A joke is an invention. You pulled jokes out of your ass, and that's that's never existed. But that's a thought. I know how to thought and communicate. Uh -huh. I know how to thought, I just said. I, I can I can <laughs> thought all day and, and spoke all day, but to create a physical thing, like a, a bookstore where we fly the books on a plane and, and stick it up your ass on the doorstep, ah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is impressive. Like they had to get a soldering iron, and they're down in the basement, and their wife's going, "Come to dinner." And he goes, "Fuck you, cunt! I'm making a, a Lego dick plow," you know. And yeah, that's true. Just how do you make metal do things? That's insane. Battle bots. I, I have no idea, but I also had a T-shirt invention. We might have talked about this before, you and I, off off pod. I have like a billion dollar T-shirt idea industry, but I don't know how Ooh. to make it work. Well, are you willing to divulge? Because some Tuesday is going to make a zillion dollars off of this. I don't want to give it away because exactly right. someone will take this thing. But maybe this won't count as a copyright, me just saying it. Ah. But it's a very simple idea. And I, ha I made a couple calls once to a couple oh, really? people. But the, the key, my friend, was like the way to really make money is you got to print the T-shirts yourself in your you know, garage or attic. Ah. I don't have either of those things. That's I what know. I mean. That's that's what I'm talking about. These guys, Musk and, and fucking Queerzos, they actually did the thing. I just have the idea. I need a partner who won't fuck me. So if you know how to make a T-shirt, hit me up and uh, you know blow me. But see, that's the other thing is these Musk was an autistic whack job from Africa, and he couldn't get laid, and he's weird looking, and his name's Musk. So he had all that against. So he has to invent that thing. He's got the T-shirt idea you have. He's gonna bust his ass to make it happen because he. At least you, you're a fun guy. You can have a great time. You can dance. You got friends. You're funny. You got an act. So like, you don't need the T-shirt really, but he needed right. it. That's a good point. Yeah, I needed the jokes. <clears throat> right. So I did that. And exactly. the herpes. To each is anal. So everybody's got their, their different need. Right. All right. Well, we'll we'll try to figure something out, I guess. We got this angle. Now, are you, are you scared about the new strain? Because I want to kill myself. I'm over here. I put the news on. There's a British strain. There's a South uh. African strain. And then there's a Brazilian stripper. And they're like, this is this is fucking crazy, folks. It's scarier. They want me to double mask now. Oh. And two masks. I've never even heard of this strain. Although the African's the only one that scares me, but this is all news to me. This is this is a big thing. And by March, it's going to be the dominant strain. It's going to dominate us, and uh, which <laughs> that I'm into. But uh, yeah. I'm shitting my pants over here because I watch the news, and there's like a doctor guy, nerd, with big, thick glasses and a mustache. He looks like a loser. And he says... Hey, uh, the, the vaccine, he's like, it might work, uh, but we got to make some adjustments to the vaccine. Oh. And then the lady's like, so would we have to go through all the things again? He kind of did the pause. You know when like your dentist is like, I found a couple abnormalities. Yeah. And you're like, 
Is it bad? And he pauses. He did the bad pause. Ah, I hate the bad pause. Like, is that a pregnant pause or a miscarriage pause? This is a this is a you know the wrong color baby pause. Like oh, I'm not that's the father pause. pause. Yeah. What is it? And I'm not the father pause. Oh yeah, you slept with Reggie pause. Yeah, they take it out and you're like that doesn't look right. And yeah, I'm not Asian. So um, he did the pause and he's like. Yeah, we'll have to do some additional uh, testing, so we might be starting all over again. I'm going to shoot myself in the tits. Oh, my God. I can't do it. I, I, I'll just, I'm going to move to a, uh, where do they, don't, COVID doesn't hit New Zealand, right? New Zealand and Wuhan is like back, evidently. They're like, there was a whole oh. article in the paper. They, they're having concerts over there or eating chopsticks, whatever. I'm going to Wuhan. Fuck it. Give me a bat soup and, and a fried rice and a rickshaw. I don't give a shit. I can't go through it again. This is hell on earth. I'm sick of it. I have a theory that if you're scared of it, you'll get it. It's like a horror movie. <coughs> Interesting. I think yeah. the people that don't aren't scared of it get it, but then nothing happens. They're just kind of like, ah, I was sick for a couple hours, whatever. Well, well, you know me. I mean, I, I feel like I had it in March, and then I think I got it in July, according to the Tuesdays, when, or October, whenever I was in Bridgeport, and I had that fucking meltdown in the, in the hotel room where I couldn't get warm. And everybody's like, oh, that was COVID. You just had a 12-hour COVID bug. I'm like, <laughs> all right, well, then it ain't so bad for me, so uh, I'm going to keep working. Yeah, it's a strange thing. I think I might have had it in March, too, because I coughed twice. It cleared my throat once, but uh, yep. I, I don't know what to think. I'm at the Village Underground tonight, though. You can stream the thing on mintcomedy.com. They're doing the VU. You do a rapid test, and then they put everyone in there, and uh, I, I don't know what's what anymore. Oh, man. I did I did one of those. It was at a warehouse, though. The VU is going to be amazing. You're going to be back on that stage in front of those bricks, baby. Wow. I can't wait. I'm very excited. It's going to be a fun night, a fun show. I mean, I'm nervous because last time they did one you were on, Liz told me for a half hour they hired Nurse Ratchet and she shoved a fucking two by four up your nose. It wasn't pretty. Uh, Chris D cried. Kirsten almost ate her out. It was it was awkward. They put they do the, the you know, the crazy long Q-tip with the long wood. And then you go, geez, that was hell. And then they do the other nostril. I, I can't do it. If they pull out that long thing, I already told Liz, I'm like, you better get someone that's not in the story you were telling me. I want yeah. the one, people are talking now, they put it just, they barely put it into your nostril and then they swab and pull a booger out. That's what I need. Yeah, they, they usually give you like a little rim job, but uh, they did it to Mateo and he hated it, then he liked it. So <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it felt like aggressive and, and unnecessary. Like you just went up my asshole with that nose thing, and now you're doing it again and even harder. And he was seemed to enjoy it. I don't know. I'm glad I got it over with. Yeah, I, I'm scared to death. I was hoping that uh, I don't know. She claims she got a nice lady this time. I don't. Is it is it like strippers? Can you look in their profile and see how long their fucking sticks are? No, no, it was just a fat Hispanic lady in scrubs and a, and a face mask, and that's that's it. She's like a lunch lady with a Q-tip, and it, it's it's a bummer. Oh, God, I don't want anything to do with it. <clears throat> I hate this it lady takes, already. It takes three seconds and just got to suck it up. I think it's kind of like a woman with a virginity. Like, the hymen breaks, you bleed, it hurts, but after that, it feels good. All right, well, I'm doing that. I'm there tonight. I don't know. I don't think you can get tickets, but you can stream it. I think it's mint comedy.com so check yeah. that out and then tomorrow night i'm in royersford which i can't wait it's gonna be one of the shows it's me ron on sarah Cantor. i love the shows and this is the thing i miss the most even though i've had it a few times during covid i love the whole show in the car nothing yes. better you're all in the car together we're driving down and uh you know how much i love that royersford gig so it's love. not too late to get tickets obviously have you seen it with the with the dome i did the first dome show yeah that was that one where it was raining and muddy and Louis blew me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It, it, it's a hot, hot crowd. And Soul Joel, man, he just really did something special over there. I know we blow him all the time, but he deserves it. It's probably the best show in the country outdoors. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. And then uh, I'm doing my plugs now all of a sudden. But now I'm going to Key West next week or a couple of weeks, February 11th to the 13th. And I'm just shitting my pants on that one. Cause everyone's like, Florida's crazy. They're all raping each other down there. No one's, you know, worn a mask since Christmas. So get ready for that. I'm at Key West comedy. So don't, don't come near me everybody. Because after that, I'm going straight to South America to what? see our old friend, Ari David Shafir. I'm going to go find this son of a bitch. 
What? I'm, I'm I didn't terrified. know this. Look at you. I'm terrified uh, not to... What? Not even of COVID, just because I don't trust Ari. He feels like the kind of guy who's like, I, I booked a, a jungle tour or some shit, and it's like, we got to carry machetes or whatever it is, but um, wow, I'm excited. But Carmen San Diego, you're everywhere. Well, I'm excited to go because I, you know, I went to Peru years ago. I was with you right before you remember, and it was I like remember. the hap, hap, happiest time of my life, and so it's my... My big triumphant return to South America, but now Brazil has this like super fucking bug or whatever, and I don't think they have any hospitals in South America. So no, no Wi-Fi either. I think they like put paint on your face and dance to cure you. I don't, I don't know what goes on down there. So I'm scared to death. But the real thing I'm afraid of is going from Florida directly to South America because I assume I'm going to get COVID in Florida and then die in South America like a fucking lunatic. Yeah, I can see that. You you might get it on the flight. Uh, Florida, it's a it's it's like Burning Man down there. People are running around shirtless in the streets, and they're eating rabbits and you know fucking kids. But I will say this: I would be nervous about Ari because he's been there for six months, living in a hut on a cliff. You're gonna show he's gonna be like Brando in Apocalypse Now. It's gonna be one shadow on him, you know. <laughs> and he's gonna be like, ah, you, you showed up, huh? And he's gonna have face paint on and shoot you with a machine gun and a robe. Well, I didn't even want to go, but he's like, yeah, fucking, uh, remember you said you were going to come. And then, you know, once wow. I hate to be the guy that says he's going to go. Cause he said like 150 people said they were coming. No one's coming. No. It's like a, you know, a, an orgy at my house. No one comes, but you know, like I, I kind of like, I feel like I got bullied. I was like, of course I'm coming. And then you, you ever been like in line at like a thrill ride and you don't want to go, but you just keep. You don't want to back out, so you just keep getting closer and closer to the front. Next thing you know, yeah. you're like upside down with your tits off. That's oh. how I feel. That's a good analogy, but you know you're going to love it. You, you know, it's a little shaky. It's a little nerve-wracking. You're going to get on that flight. And right when you land in wherever the hell he is, Bosnia, I don't even know, you're going to fucking, <laughs> woo! You're going to put a, a pair of shorts on and a Hawaiian shirt and drink some fucking uh, ayahuasca, and you're going to have a blast. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, like I said, last time I went to Peru, I was going to see my ex-girlfriend, and she had been living down there, but she was a very smart, wise, she didn't make a lot of bad decisions, she was attractive, you know, yeah. but Ari, being your yeah, tour opposite. guide, I mean, forget about it. I, I feel like he's going to be on mushrooms, he's going to be, you know, blowing a tribesman, and I, yep. I'm just scared to shit, but he's got a dame down there, and she's pretty uh, squared away, so hopefully that'll help, I guess. I, I don't know. We'll see. Wow, I'm proud of you, man. That's a big jump, and uh, but this is what we should be doing. I mean, it's we're we're stuck in our tiny apartments, touching our assholes. So good for you going down there. Well, down there it feels a lot less dangerous, COVID wise, than America. I mean, like we're I think we're like dominating the the COVID situation as far as having it. We're we're heading towards five hundred thousand deaths. I think Ooh. South America's got like eleven. I think outside of Brazil, which is where I'm going. Yeah, well, half of them live outside, and they they you know eat in the ocean and all that. So they they you know they live in a tree. They're pretty uh, you know it's all sunshine and beach. Where we're we're in the cold here, so everybody's staying inside and giving it to their aunt. Right, and I think we're going to be pretty isolated out in the jungle or the woods or whatever there yes. is down there. So <clears throat> I'm excited. It feels like um, you know, like I said, I mean South America is the coolest place i've ever been in my whole life so it's exciting to go back you feel like all right i feel like you know rocky or something yeah yeah well you're, you're a little older a little wiser a little gayer now you're gonna go back with new fresh glasses and a type two mouth and and do it up I'm, how many days uh i think a week six Woo! six days six days three nights something like that all right uh, that was a joke <laughs> but yeah that'll be fun holy hell i mean can you do a pod we're going to have to, I just realized that now, we're going to have to stockpile a couple episodes. I'll be in Florida before I could pod there, but I'll, I'm will i excited because I'll finally come back with some stories, for God's sakes. Yeah. Every Man, podcast, I'm like, I bought new sneakers and got a haircut. I, I gotta, <laughs> I'm going to go and really try to, you know, fuck some, some ladies. Some pygmies, boys. yeah. But I think, I mean, I've done Ari's pod since he's been in his hut. You've done his pod. Tim Dillon did his pod. So he's got the setup. I just don't know if you want to, because I mean, six days, you're going to, after the third day, you're going to be like, all right, I've done eight pounds of mescaline. I've eaten 19 <laughs> pineapples. Uh, you know, uh, I've done, I've killed a pig and whatever. So like, 
Maybe a pod there is not a bad idea. Yeah, maybe. If we if we got the time, we might try to squeeze one out a bonus at the very least. We'll call in, and uh, it'll be you, me, Ari, and Sarah, and, uh, you know, his boyfriend. Please. Uh, this is the only time I'm worried about your sobriety. Uh, you know, you're a tough cat. You're strong-willed. You got a decent piece. I'm like, ah, he'll be in a baseball game. We're all chugging beers, but he's fine. But this is like, I mean, you guys are going to be drinking jungle juice. Oh, please. That stuff terrifies. I'm not drinking anything. I'm bringing all my own Pepsis. I'm going to bring <laughs> peanuts and peanut butter and jellies. It'll be uh, great. I mean, I went on a, a world tour in a private jet to 28 countries and only did Coke twice. So I think I'll be fine. All right. All right. All right. Well, uh, oh, you said something that made me think of uh, something <clears throat> else. Mike Cronin, you said something that was similar to him. And me? I was going to, yeah, I was going to swing that into, I was just in Oklahoma City with Mike. Um, I'm trying to think of what I said that was close to him. Gay, chunky. Sad, yeah. <laughs> um, I can't remember, but either small way. Small dick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good egg. Good great egg. egg. One of the best eggs. Sweet, sweet chubster. And uh, we, I'd never really met him, I don't think, or at least never worked with him. And I flew down to OKC. By the way, Oklahoma City, it's one of those cunt cities to get to. It's like 19 flights, a layover, a Greyhound, uh, and a hitchhike. Brutal. What, how did you... We had, they, don't, they don't have direct flights? To, that surprises me. Sorry, I just fucking had like a stroke there. That surprises yeah. me that you can't fly direct because... I, I go by everything by sports. I'm like, they got a basketball team, and they had a bomb. Can't you... Yeah, no. Do anything? It, it was... It's one of those flights where you're looking on orbits and you're like, God damn, these these options. It's like, okay, you leave at 6 a.m., you land at 4.30 the next afternoon. You're like, wait, what? You know, and you got to sleep at the airport and go to Dallas-Fort Worth, whatever it is. So it's like a 6 a.m. flight out of JFK. I hate JFK. And then you go to uh, Charlotte for three days, and then you go to <laughs> OKC, and you get there right before showtime, and you, you haven't showered. It sucks. So... Just the flight there. By the way, flights now. It used to be a dream traveling with the COVID. Now every flight is full. Oh, geez. I, well, I think Delta still does the seat between. Oh, That's something. I, I don't Delta. know. I don't feel yeah. like it doesn't matter. At least you got 100 people on a plane. I don't know what. The seat between is only three feet wide. I don't know what's what with these fucking regulations. I agree. You're in a, a cigar tube with 200 people, and you all take your mask off to eat a pretzel every 10 minutes. What's the difference between that and you can't go to school? Isn't that worse? School's got a window. Here's what I think. I think it would be helpful if everyone was on the same page. That might be helpful. But, you know, I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No page. We don't read. We but, got bad pages. Yeah. Uh, paging Dr. Herman. Remember that? No. <laughs> that was Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Ah. Yeah, it was a deep, deep pull. Tim, uh, Tim Burton. But, oh, yeah. yeah, he's good. He's, he's good. Okay. He's had a few flop He's but fine. Uh, good overall. I like Big Fish and Batman. There you go. Good. That was my gay porn duo. <laughs> so uh, what was I talking about? Oh, I yeah. I don't know. Meet? Oh, okay, Casey, getting okay. there. Getting there. By the way, you know, you fly to Dallas, then you get on another flight. Everything's delayed. Everything's queefing. You suck. Flying <laughs> there was hell. On the second flight... I had the most white trash couple on the planet. Like, this was right out of central casting. The guy with the cowboy hat, button down, unbuttoned to here. He's got the skin, that skin that's been just ruined by the sun. Oh, yeah, Florida you know, skin. His, his neck skin looks like a ball bag, and he's brown and golden and weird colors, and he's got the mask, like, right over here, and then he's got the boots on with the bad jeans, and he's got the belt buckle. He sits down. He's like, you're in my seat. And I was like, no, I'm not. He goes, oh, all right. And then he's mad at me. Uh, and then yeah. he sits down. And then his disgusting uh, pig of a wife comes on. And she's like, ah, where am I sitting? Bah, bah. Put your mask on, ma'am. Oh, fuck you and your mask. Like total anti-maskers. Just a nightmare. And then she sits next to me, of course. And she pulls out this fucking tuna sandwich out of a plastic wrap. I mean, it was a nightmare. <laughs> And she's yelling at, at at old man Reggie, like, hey, uh, uh, how do you get the TV to work? And I'm like, Jesus, of all the flights, all the seats, I got to sit next to Hee Haw over here. <laughs> Brutal. Uh, oh, that sorry. Was I, thought that, I, just, I, I thought had to get was, that out. I thought there was more to that. First of all, I mean, you don't bring tuna on a, on a plane. I can tell you that. 
You got that right. Two nighted. It was I, brutal. And there's she, a reason that uh, airplane snacks are all uh, even smelling. You pretzels, nuts, whatever that other bullshit is they give out on Delta. They call a cookie. You know, you oh, can't yeah. have you can't have fish and and seaweed <laughs> and fucking you know bologna on there. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. And then eventually, uh, you know, the flight stopped boarding and. The, the the cowboy had a seat next to him, so I go, hey, why don't you uh, saddle up next to old uh, Dosey Doe over there? And and she was like, ah, I'm comfortable. I was like, all right, all right. So I eventually moved up. One of the waitresses, or whatever you call the sky waitress, was like, hey, uh, there's a seat up there if you want to. And I was like, I appreciate it. She she was black. She got it. She knew I was sitting next to you know Cuck Dynasty. So I had to go up there, but man... What is that where you, nobody else noticed her? I clocked her at 12 o'clock, uh, two hours before she walked on the plane, and then she sits right next to me. It's brutal. It's the law of attraction or Murphy's law or, uh, you know, L.A. law, whatever, whatever it is, <laughs> some kind of Murphy Brown. It, yeah. it just always seems to happen when you're, when you, when you're traveling, I guess. But, uh, and there's more and more of them in, uh, in this great country of ours. Everywhere you look, there's some fucking fat, Stinkwad, who hasn't showered <laughs> since you know uh, George McGovern ran, and th- they wear weird shoes and they got you know brown socks. It, it stinks. There's, yeah. a, there's a whole bunch of stinkers in this country. A lot of stinkers. She had the rhinestones uh, and <laughs> a lot of denim. It was it was bad news. She had the limp, like you say, and oh god, it was the longest four hours of my life. But uh, we got there, and I gotta say. Cool town, you know, a bit of a sleepy town, you know. But uh, by the way, OKC, Garth Brooks is from there, Flaming Lips, and Kings of Leon. Oh, no kidding. That's pretty yeah. good. Pretty good, and a lot of athletes and stuff. So they got a decent alumni, and just a cute, you know, blue-collar, uh, hard-working steel town. A lot of brick. Everything's very low. They got not one as much skyscraper. as they used to be. What's that? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I said there's not as much as there used to be. It was an ah. OKC bombing <laughs> yeah, joke. Well, that was what I named my show, was the uh, the OKC <laughs> bombing. And But, man, what a great club. Mike was great. We had a good hang. This guy Cameron hosted. And uh, just one of those good clubs that gets it. And even the posters, like, upcoming, you're like, oh, they, they know who to book. These guys book well. They have good taste. And, uh, man, great crowds. We sold out a couple – uh, just a hot, hot weekend all around. Too much booze, but a great weekend. Yeah, that sounds fun. I, I wish I could uh, go do that club. I got to have my agent hit them up. I, I've never even heard of this club. You said you were there, and I was like, I've never heard of this place, but it's brand sounds, new. Sounds great. And then Meat, if I'm not mistaken, Mike, I know him as Meat, but he had the, uh, what do you call it, the vaccine shoved up his ass. Yes! Am I correct? I mean, that's exciting. I, that's what I want is just that vaccine, and then I'll do a slip and slide up Fifth Avenue. Yeah, I'd love to get the vaccine, and he's got it, and he's free as a bird. He's, you know, getting massages with happy endings and eating at a buffet, you know, no sneeze guard. He's living the dream, and we'd get drunk every night and share the joint and share the bottle. You know, he didn't give a fuck. Uh, So, yeah, great, great hang, and just that hang is so necessary. Staying up till 5 in the morning, shitting on bad comics and talking about your wife sucking and all that, and... Just a just a good clean cut weekend. Then the flight back was seventeen hours of hell. Uh, that sucks. <clears throat> I don't miss that part of it. I'm not looking forward to a Atlanta to South America flight, but Oof. I'll get it done. And I'll tell you how I'll get it done, folks. I'll Ooh. be nice and comfy in my sheath underwear. That's right. Tuesdays with stories is brought to you by Sheath Underwear. Sheath yeah. is. Uh, I don't even know how to get started on this. You're wearing sheath right now. Is that what's happening? Or are you showing me your dick? You got the sheath. Look at that. I got the Never. sheath. I got a nice t-shirt. My wife got sent some like booty shorts. Ooh. These are these are sexy. They're like white, uh, velvety. I don't even know how to describe it. Nylon booty shorts, and they just hug the rump, and you can kind of see through them just a little bit. Very yes. sexy. They might have been meant photo. for me. I can't tell, but. Um, it's got a nice sports bra, too. I got a sweet T-shirt for working out in it. It's got the ball pouch. The, it's got a pouch for your balls and a pouch for your dick. And I always talk about this. I'll have my dick in that silky smooth pouch. I pull it out, and it's like pulling your cock out of a big, juicy, nice, tight pussy, which I don't <laughs> think is what they were going for. But 
It's great. What it does is it keeps your balls and dick separate. It's nice and supportive. It's sexy looking. I really do love it. It's the only underwear I'll wear these days. The idea Thanks. for Sheath came from its founder, U.S. Army soldier Robert Patton, during his second tour in Iraq. That's right, two tours. If it works, or at least two tours. Maybe he did more. I don't know. If it works in the sun-blasted deserts of Iraq, you know it'll work wherever you live. Mark, tell him how to get this great underwear. You got that right. As you can see, I'm wearing them now. I love the sheet. They sent my lady uh, some booty shorts as well. She looks like a little boy in it, which is a huge turn on. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESGAYS. This guy gets it. TUESGAYS to get 20% off your first order and sheath underwear's 100% money back guarantee. But you're not sending these puppies back. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESGAYS. Support the show by supporting them. Get sheath underwear and let them support your cojones. I'll tell you what, you're going to need some flexible underwear when, once you take a nice blue chew because oh, yeah. that dick is going to be shooting out of those underwear. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Blue Chew, the first chewable dick pill. It's, yes. uh, this stuff is great. I mean, we all have had limp dick, I assume. I mean, I'm in my 50s now, and, yeah. uh, you know, I've, I've been having sex with my wife since 1988, so, <laughs> I mean, I really got to stick, uh, you know, a can of Pepsi up my ass to get hard, <laughs> or I got to take a Blue Chew, which Ooh, is... Pepsi challenge. <laughs> it, has, it has the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. That's right. You eat a nice big sandwich. Your wife, maybe she wasn't eating because you don't let her. And she says, hey, you want to bang? And you say, yeah, I'll just pop a Blue Chew. It's fast and easy. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians. So you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. And after you chew the blue, your package will be anything but discreet. It'll be bursting out of your panties. Tell them how to do it, Mark. Love the blue chew. You know me, I'm old Mr. Softy, and this shit works quick. It works well, and uh, no side effects or anything. By the way, the blue chew lady is pretty hot, too. You have to call and do a FaceTime call with the little doctor lady, and she's in a lab coat with cans, and you're talking about your dick. It's great. Cans. So even that's fun. Uh, right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our promo code TUESDAYS. Just pay five clams and shipping. Again, that's blue com. Promo code TUESDAYS to try it free. You can't lose. BlueChew.com, finally a website that can give you an erection. Yes, ah! sir. Yes, ma'am. All right. <clears throat> well, it's good to have you uh, back in the in the saddle again. Oh, yeah. Good My to be saddle. back. I mean, New York. So what's going on? Do you live in Brooklyn? What's happening? Well, I'm getting a dick load of, uh, of reviews and results and what do you call it? Uh, recommendations and yes, no, maybes. Don't do it. You should definitely do it. I got a couple comics going, what are you crazy? You got to do it. That's the next spot in New York. It's blowing up. It's going to be a huge uh, the Barclays, blah, blah, blah. And then I got a couple people going, what are you nuts? You got the best apartment. You live in the best location. You got the pip, 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 pip. So I don't know what the hell to do. I think, you know, we talked about it last week, obviously, but also just you got a picture right now. There's no comedy seller. Just think ah. about think about all the nights in the last 10 years we've been at the comedy seller. Yeah. And you go, where are you going, buddy? And I'm like, where am I going? I live 90 minutes from here. I got to go home. Good the, point. The, you're going to live 45 minutes from the seller. You won't get those last minute spots. Hey, we need you. Somebody dropped out. And then Ooh. you hang until 3 in the morning. you got to take a cab. It costs 300 bucks or whatever. Maybe you drove because you have a garage or whatever, but you got to find parking, the whole thing. It is so valuable to just, what are you, 12 paces from the comedy cellar, for God's sakes? <laughs> a stone's throw, whatever that means. That's how far you can throw a stone. Ah, okay. Well, then I'm further. <laughs> uh, we're, we're actually closer than a stone's throw. I could throw a stone past this. Underhand. You're an underhand toss stone throw away. Yes, like a lesbian with a softball. I mean, yeah, I'm right around the corn and the river bend. So, I, I, yeah, that that's a good point. I didn't factor that in. I'm just I'm thinking about those amenities. I'm thinking about that garage. Imagine living in New York, pulling your fucking Sentra right up to the asshole of the building and just going up the elevator and you're in. 
Yeah, that's pretty good because I got a garage and I got a garage story, by the way. I got to oh. tell I have, I have one story and this one's going to drive you cuckoo bananas. You're going to firebomb this place after I tell you about this story. But Oh, <clears> oh boy. Lay it but, on me, Fetty. I got a garage, but my garage is uh, my garage is further from my house than the comedy cellar is from your house. Wow, man! Yeah. When you put it like that, see, you make a great point there, Tubbs, because you're basically saying the world is shut down. So living there now in these times is pretty good in that place. Because what the hell am I doing? I'm not. I'm zooming everything. Exactly. But so when the world opens, it's good to be here. Exactly. I mean, just think about whatever it is, six months from now, eight months, three weeks, whatever it is, when the Comedy Cellar is back to doing eight shows a night. I- I'm telling you, I've lived this feeling of when I am done at the Comedy Cellar, I got to leave because I got a fucking journey home. Yeah. And once I started making some money, I just take a cab because the train is just brutal. Forget about the train. But yeah. it's 40 bucks every night. Every single night, the seller pays me 40 bucks, and then I hand it to the cab driver like a half hour later. Wow, that is that adds up there, sloppy jalopy. But now you got the the, the vehicle. So, are you gonna drive in now? I drive in right now. I drive because it's great. I mean, once again, COVID. I'm fucking swinging lanes. I'm smashing into <laughs> mailboxes for fun. I love it. I mean, parking. I did the uh, the three monkeys show again. I pull right up in front of the club and 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 toss the guy my keys. One of the one of the monkeys. Yeah, and just go right up there. <laughs> Easy. I think it's Davy. Um, uh-huh. <clears throat> Jones, is that his name? Yeah, the the monkey. Yeah, Davy Jones. Uh, Davy Jones and Nesmith, Michael Nesmith. One of them invented whiteout, or his dad, Elon Musk did. Yeah, one of them. Oh. I think it's Michael Nesmith. His family invented whiteout. Well, that's racist. But uh, either way, <laughs> but damn, any, that's amazing. Any tits? I'll start driving, and I like driving. But man, the all I've ever when I've ever met in the village, I just think, God, think about. Mark and Wolf and Lynn Coplitz, these people that get to walk to the comedy cellar. Yeah. All that's, right. You, that's you two some... cents. Yeah, no, it's a good sense. It's two. I, I counted it. It's it makes sense. You got something there. You I never thought of it like that. The world is closed right now. So of course you want to live in a palace when the world's closed, but when it's open, you want to be in the heart, or at least I do. Right. Fart. Right. So All let me right. tell you about this parking garage situation. Hit me. <laughs> reflux so saturday i'm doing Silent. the three monkeys gig again and uh they were thrilled that we talked about how wonderful the room is nah uh, i thought we weren't supposed to give it away i was i was keeping a lid on it maybe you're right shit i think it's cool i i mean they they sell it out every night and it seems uh against code yeah i think uh boy i don't know i don't, I don't know either Hold on, I got a fire. It's gonna be funny, I think. Maybe. Let's see. Ooh, that was great. It was uh, the second one. I think was a shit, honestly. But <laughs> I didn't felt even a little. Just, you put a tag on it. Felt a little leaky. So okay, so Saturday, Sarah and I are on the gig, and I you gotta text the garage. You text car, and then it usually texts back and says eight minutes or whatever. That's how long it takes to walk over there, about. And this time it says. 14 minutes. Mm. So I'm like, ooh, that's interesting. Saturday, whatever. So we go to Starbucks. I get my cookie. I shove that in my ass. I get a hot tea. I dump that on Sarah's head. We go over there, and we get there, and a guy has just dropped off his car. He's dropping off. And then there's a car with tinted windows just sitting there, like facing out, like this car's leaving. Yeah. The other guy pulls in. So when you pull in... Usually, you just leave the car running. There's a guy standing there. You go, hey, take it easy. Uh-oh. And they say, see you later. But if there's no one there, that means they're going to get a car. So you okay. got to wait. So I always feel for the guy dropping off the car because I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I got somewhere to be, but I'm waiting. And I just go, they told me it's going to be 10 minutes, 12 minutes. So I go, whatever. But yeah. the dropping off sucks because you think you're home. You know that feeling? You've been yes. driving. You get to the garage, and the nice part about the garage is you just get out of your car and you're home. Right. But when they're not there, you got to sit there and go, fuck, I'm so close to being home, but I don't want to just leave it here because it's running, it's New York City, whatever. That's the part of travel no one talks about is those little extra steps that are inevitable, but they fuck you every time. It sucks. So he's sitting there. I feel for him, and we're in the garage. By the way, it's Saturday. It was like 14 degrees, and it's a garage, so it's all open. It's freezing. Yeah. So we're sitting in there, and 
I'm like, what's up with this car just sitting here with the windows tinted? That's weird that it's just a car taking up this space. Mm. And then there's the car returning, and he's waiting. He's got a, three bags of groceries. He's just waiting mm. to get the attendant to come down and go, hey, all set, see you later. Right. Then another couple shows up, and they're oh. waiting for their car. Oh, boy. Saturday night rush hour. Exactly. So the garage is all blocked because one guy's pulling in. The other car's pulling out, but it's just parked there. Now we got this couple. It's Sarah and I and this couple and this guy. So there's five of us, and we're all just standing here. Oh, boy. Time is passing now, and Sarah has a different gig than me. I got to drive her to her gig at 44th and Lex. Mine's at 54th and 8th. Oh, boy. Time is clicking away. My cookie's digesting, and we're just sitting there, and I always try to be patient. I'm zenned out. I talked about the traffic a few weeks ago. I've, I've changed. Yes. But- transitioned i've only transitioned so much i'm still a man and i start to go all right this is getting what the fuck is this where is the guy yeah i texted uh, an hour ago there's five of us sitting here waiting Uh uh-oh we wait for about uh, about 11 minutes the tinted car the door opens it's the parking attendant huh He's on the phone. He's just sitting in the tinted window car. He's chatting with his with his wife or his dame or his squeeze or somebody. He's well, just he in s- there chatting. Doesn't he see the the backup here or the the the, the traffic? He doesn't give a fuck. He's he's what? literally on the phone. He gets out and he's like, "All right. All right. I'll talk to you." Hangs up the phone. It was like a comedy <laughs> sketch. I couldn't believe it. I wanted to fucking wring his neck like Homer. <laughs> That's hilarious. So he shuts the door, and then the, the, the guy with the groceries goes, okay, you good? And he's like, yeah, no problem. He goes into the big giant elevator, and he just pulls my car out. It's been sitting there the whole time. So he already brought my car down. This uh, whole time, my car is just sitting there. You didn't see it? No, it's in the elevator. It's ah. the, so the garage is, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. So the garage is just like a driveway, and then there's a giant car elevator. The garage is not seen. It's like upstairs. I got gotcha. you. So it's like a hidden garage. New York is funky. It's probably anyone not in a big city is like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, it's kooky. So you don't see it. So it's just been in this elevator the whole time, and this guy is literally has five human beings standing outside in front of him waiting. He can see all of us. We're all checking our watches and blowing each other. And he's just on the telephone. I've never seen anything more egregious. It's the most New York service moment I've ever seen in my life. And yes. wasn't even like, I'm so sorry. My mother has tit cancer. My father's gay. Nothing. He just goes, yep. Did, literally said zero things. Brazen. Now, here's the thing is, first of all, he's a genius for sitting in the window tinted car. You didn't even know he was in there. Exactly. I don't even know whose car it was. Ah. He's probably sitting in somebody's car. Yeah, and he probably left it there. It's like, I'm going to use this as my phone booth for a while. This this is like my escape. But the question is, aren't you a little jealous? I wish I had an inch of that. That's exactly what Sarah and I said. I'm like, can you imagine if I saw, if one person, I'm not even involved. The guy with the groceries, I was like, I feel for this guy. I know that feeling of getting home. And here's the thing. Put in some fucking AirPods and just have your conversation while you're oh, moving cars around. How hard is that? Good. It that's was good. like a, a middle finger right up my ass, which I love normally, but I had somewhere sure. to be. Yeah. This guy's ice cream is melting here, for Christ's sake. Insa- I mean, is that the insane, one of the most insane, uh, what do you call it, services the, I've ever heard? Membrane. Yeah, no, that's bananas, and it's so perfect. He's probably a young, hip guy with a, with a faded haircut and a diamond earring. I can picture the guy so perfectly. And he yeah. just lives his life, you know? He's like, I'll do it when I'm ready. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I don't know. It was just the kind of thing of like, man, what? It, it's like you wish you had that, but I'm also grateful I don't have that. True, It, it true. sucks to always be worried about everybody, want everyone to be happy, and it's, it's stressful and anxiety-inducing. I'm trying to let go of that. But at the same time, I'd rather be that than like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about anybody else. I'm on the phone. Yeah, that guy's gonna die happy. That's the deal. he'll he'll get in more fights and more altercations because of the way he lives. But that guy's gonna die way happier than us. We're gonna be at the funeral going. Is it open casket? Is it closed? Is everybody okay? Is how's the temperature? We're gonna be in the casket dead, worrying. This guy's living life and he's at the beach every day, basically in his head. Yeah, it, it was just uh, insane, and you just kind of go, all right. Well, I guess that's. 
we got to just take that one on the chin. And if you complain, you're the asshole, if you know exactly. what I mean. So, uh, you're a yeah, Karen. It was, it was strange. So, But no problem. Went and dropped Sarah off at her gig. Went over to Three Monkeys, and that was fun. I uh, saw Sean Patton. Hadn't seen him in a, in a dog's age. Yes. Always a pleasure to see him. And then Louie came by. He did a set, and that was exciting for the kids. And um, good hang. Allie Breen was over there. She's always ah. a good hang. Sheba. Reese wasn't there, but, but uh, who else was there? Chris Murphy saw him again. And uh, yep, good, yep. good crew over there. Good group. Good show. And uh, it was really fun. And then, you know, we went outside and we, you know, Louie hadn't been on stage in weeks and I hadn't been on stage before last week in quite a while. And you have that thing where you're, you're shoving each other going, God, it was so fun. Oh, my God, yeah. this is crazy. We're gay. Yeah. And that show is also fun because it's it's a real bar show vibe. Like you got to kind of get them. You can't just go out there and they're applauding like crazy. Like one guy's ordering, the other guy's on the phone. He's sitting in a tinted car. He doesn't give a fuck. So you got to like grab them. And when you kill in one of those shows, it feels way better. Yeah, I, I gotta say it was it mirrored the week before, where the first show was good and fun, and the second show was like just tough sledding. I mean, I, they hated me. It was like I did a joke where you know I did this joke about you know I have an app that tells you how many times you picked up your phone, and I'm like, well, that doesn't do anything. It should be repercussions. If you pick up your phone a hundred times, we send a dick pic to your mother, and uh. zero. What? Like they were, I mean, actual zero. Like they were like, dick pic to your mother. Why would you uh, do that? That's what I'm saying. They're a little dumber. They're like, why would you do that? And you're like, well, it's a joke. I'm, I'm joking. I'm, I'm saying like, an extreme thing to elicit laughter. It would be unpleasant to have yeah. a dick pic sent to your mother. That's why yeah. it would be. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm talking zero. No, Nobody went, ha ha. It was just zilch. Yeah. After that, you're like, I don't know what you want from me like what do i do here i told you a joke i got no response the joke usually works so where do we go from here yeah it was uh, that was tough but still a, a great hang great to see everyone they got great food there and yeah uh, yeah yeah it was nice it's a good time and it's again it's just good to get up and good to see comics and bullshit and also i feel like comics have to talk about things. we just talk things out so just sitting around with a bunch of comics talking about covid actually is is almost uh it's a relief Yes, cathartic. That's the word. Thank you, cath catheter. But yeah, well, it, it's fun. Yeah, no, I, I loved it. It was exciting. So go check that out. And uh, if you want to see some live comedy, come to Royersford tomorrow night, for fuck's sake, or Key West Comedy, February 11th to the 13th. Yeah, let me just get out of here on this. We got a couple more minutes. I, I forgot to say this about Oklahoma City. Five shows, killer, whatever. Uh, one night, it was a drunk. That that town boozes. They get after it out there. It's a big, drunken, cowboy, riding a bull, rodeo town. And they get sauced. And Saturday Late Show, great show. It was rowdy, but good rowdy. But it was one of those shows where, like, every pause, somebody would go, Woo! Oh. And you're like, ah, I'm pausing you, Queef. Give me a second. And then a lot of this comedy. And you're like, ah, here we go. And then you hear the glass shatter off to the left. You're like, oh, great. And then this was a new one. First time for me. Stage right, all the way against the wall, high top table, caught on fire. What? They had a basket of something or other with that wax paper and a bunch of napkins. I guess somebody uh, took a quick toke or was or was smoking free base or whatever. The whole table catches on fire, so now you got to address it. So I'm like, what, was Richard Pryor next? You know, I'm trying to make it funny. You know, you hear a bunch of women go like, ooh, you know. And then the, the waiter runs over and a, and a bouncer runs over, and they start putting napkins on it. It gets bigger. Oh, my God. Napkins so I go, on a fire. They're fucking yeah, idiots. what is that? <laughs> Napkins on a fire. That's insane. I'm yelling rape at a crowded church, whatever it is. And then uh, one guy eventually, like the, the smart guy, gets up and pours a beer on it and it goes out. Wow. Good thing he didn't pour, uh, you know, whiskey on it or whatever. That's oh, flammable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> what was, I mean, was it a couple of, couple of greasy pizzas or what? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy hamburgers? What the, did they find? Did you get like a uh, diagnosis or whatever the fuck you call it? Verdict? Well, I think the table has those little red candles on it, and I uh, think something drooped into it and caught on fire. But everybody's so shit and on oxycotton that they just go. Oh, one guy started telling <laughs> camp stories. They pulled out a marshmallow. You know, I saw a Cub Scout. 
I was like, get on it. And, you know, also try to get back into material after that. You know, that's like trying to watch Happy Days after your ass is plowed. You know, it's, it's quite a shift. <laughs> what? Uh, how far into the show were you? Like, were we talking 20 or 10? We were 40 minutes in. I'm doing 50 minutes. And, uh, you know, I had to scoop them right off the floor for, here we go. Let's get that dick hard again. And, you know, you try to come up with fire stuff. But you're like, was did somebody burn to death? Uh, <laughs> is, this, is this a... I'm trying to think of who's a famous person who died in a fire. But, yeah, uh, you're trying to think of jokes. And uh, at one point, I was so clueless, I went, the roof, the roof. And the whole, the whole club started chanting it. And we sang the whole thing. And uh, then I went back to my joke about Uber. Oh, jeez. That that fired roof chant. That's, that's tough. <laughs> I was desperate. I was desperate. It, it took everything I had not to say, you're fired, in a Trump accent. <laughs> Yikes! No, that sucks. But that's always fun, though. It gives you something. I mean, those are the things you 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 fucking prayed for when you were new. Remember when you first featured and you had eleven minutes and you're yeah. up there and you're like, "Please, <laughs> God, let a table catch on fire so I can kill some time up here." Oh, completely, completely. Yeah, you hope to get bum rushed or a lady passes out. You're like, I need something for some content, but this was it was annoying. But I'll tell you, every show, and I learned my lesson. I was in Tempe the week before. I got heckled by some guy, and I shut him down like a fucking pro. And I remember I was like, man, that was good. I wish I had that on tape. And before the show, the producer goes or the manager goes, want me to film these? We have a rig set up. And I go, ah, I'm good. I'm good. Always film. He asked me in Oklahoma City. I said no. And then we got the fucking fire table. I blew it. Oh, yeah. Well, now it's all content. Everything's got to be content, so you got to film everything. I mean, yep. you know, some of these guys are filming their child being born and putting it on TikTok. It's it's the <laughs> future. Know. So Kids twerking. Yeah, it's it's brutal, but always filming. The sad thing is people like the, the, the wacky content, the heckle, the fist fight, the anal. They like that more than the, the fucking show. Well, this is what I've been saying. This is the one hard thing about uh, podcasts, besides my cock, is the fans, the true, the, the two's gays, they're so used to comedy. They consume everything. They're such comedy connoisseurs yeah. that they're like us with uh, movies. We're like They're like, ah, I don't know. just didn't have enough. And so then they want a gas fire. They want a, a yeah. fire leak. They want you to fall off. They want a fist fight. They want the mic to break. Because just straight old, like, boy, I was fucking my wife and she queefed. They're like, nah, we heard that in the podcast. We, we need know. something. And it, it's tough. We actually, in some ways, build like a tougher fan base. Yeah, they're jaded. They've, they've seen it all. They need, uh, they need the heroin. They need the, uh, you know, it's like the guy in the bedroom. It's like Sam Rill's old joke. We're like, I'm, I'm so warped from porn. You got to tell me I'm adopted. Like, I can't get off. It's the same shit. Yeah, exactly. I, that's how I feel. I'm like, uh, it's like being a Patriots fan. They go seven and nine. I'm like, you got to burn the fucking stadium down, these fucking losers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we've gone too far. And but have you noticed? And then we'll get out of here on this. Eventually, things go so far that the simpler, earlier, you know, original stuff starts coming back. You know, it all comes back around cyclically. Like everybody's playing these crazy video games, and before you know it. The new fad is catching a ball in a cup again on a string. Right. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe that sounds good. Maybe I can do some knock-knock jokes next tour and they'll shit. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, look at podcasting. Podcasting is just basically a bunch of fat kids in Milwaukee sitting on the floor listening to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the thing in the 30s. <laughs> well, anyways, I mean, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore, but... Uh, this was a fun one, I think. I don't know. People, thanks for uh, listening. Please go uh, follow us on the things. I don't even know anymore. It's all so silly. Do you ever have that feeling of like, what are we going to do? We're going to do this in our 50s? Oh, all the time, all the time. You <laughs> hope you get a, a Pets 2 or some shit. You know, you can just ride off that to Bob's Burgers. That would be the dream. But I mean, I don't mind doing a nice theater when I'm 88, you know, like a Don Rickles thing. But uh yeah, you don't want to be zooming at 71. <laughs> That's how I feel. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is like the, the best hour of my week. I love talking sure. to you. I love catching up. But I have those moments. I feel like Costanza. I'm like, what am I, being 61, talking about eating my own cum and shoving a shoe in my ass? I mean, this is no way. What if we have I sons, know. Jerry? We can't. <laughs> 
I know. We're going to be sitting in Lazy Boys with a cardigan on and a pipe going, ah, oh, queef, queef on my salad, I guess. But either way, I'm in Kansas City on Thursday and uh, Des Moines on Friday and uh, Omaha with meat on the 31st uh, Sunday, this Sunday. I'm all over the road. I, I can't stop. Long Island, uh, Bryan, Texas. I'm opening for some guy out there in Bryan, Texas, whatever that is. Good nights in Raleigh. Uh, you name it, uh, Funny Bone and Dayton, some other shit. Royersford again. Uh, oh, I'm doing um, what's that called? Stress Factory in Jersey on the the third, whatever that is. Oh, I'm in Lafayette. All right, but yeah, Stress Factory. So come on out, tell a friend, queef it up. We got Patreon. We just did Will and Grace and trashed it. Now we're doing Curb soon. You're not going to want to miss that on the Patreon. Yes, Patreon Friday. Also, I got to throw that out there. Side Splitters, March 18th to the 20th. I keep forgetting to uh, mention it. That's my favorite of all the clubs. Uh, That's not true, but it's one of my favorites. (laughs) I do love it. And uh, yes, go on the YouTube. I I shot this uh, video with your boy, Sal Accus, that I think is going to be out this week. Who knows? We keep editing. It was uh, me and Greg Stone. It's the funniest thing I've ever done in my life. And so go follow me on uh, YouTube. That's going to be out there. And I've been doing this podcast with Ron on, Joe and Ron on Talk Movies, and uh, it gets ugly. People think I'm a movie cunt. You should hear from this guy. My God. I mean, the fact that he hates John Candy is still appalling, and uh, he should be put down. Oh, but- the, the co- you're going to see the comments. I had to give a, like a, I had to <laughs> give a uh, what do you call it, a disclaimer, like, please stop. The guy's going to kill himself. Oh, boy. All right. Well, he's... Uh- I don't know. He's got some problems. He clearly hates himself, but yeah, give it a listen. Get kooky. And does it feel good to not be the big, the big movie villain? If, if he's, if think he's taking the throne. Well, not only that, he makes me look like, uh, you know, George Will. I'm like a conservative <laughs> with this guy. He's everything's, you know, the the. the the fabric of our society. He's such a, a liberal that he makes me look like uh, fucking uh, Hannity. So I, I'm <laughs> Wait, loving it. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Political? I thought it was a movie pod. Uh, that's what I keep saying to him. He thinks Field of Dreams is about, you know, imprisonment and private oh. prisons or something. I don't know what's going on. Oh, this guy stinks. It's worth a listen. It's it's really uh, fun and it's 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 picking up a little bit on YouTube. So go check it out and uh, be nice to the guy. He's a good person and he's smarter than you are probably. Not probably. you. Uh, well, probably you too, but, probably. Uh, but uh, you know what I mean. He's a very smart guy. He's very funny, and uh, he yeah, likes he's being contrarian. So go check it out. Yeah, one of the funniest guys. And he'll be in Royersford with me Wednesday, and there was something else I was going to plug. I can't remember what it was, but uh, YouTube. Go follow me on YouTube. Follow the podcast on YouTube and join the Patreon and suck your father's dick. Yeah, get a shirt on Tee Public. Go to my YouTube. Uh, I hate myself. Out to lunch. Keep those numbers. You're you're cooking on almost two and a half here, so the numbers that keep clicking up. And uh, I got a pod with Sam where we get drunk, and uh, it's called. We had to change the name eight times, but yeah. Uh oh, what are you jerking it? I was bringing it home. I'm doing. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm jockeying. Oh yeah. All right. Well yeah. Down Blow the your stretch. Dead. Get a get a get a get a haircut and uh, praise Allah. Thank you. George is saying, cut it.